Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for joining us on the show and, of course, following us across YouTube and Facebook. In the studio with me, Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson. And here's what's on the agenda. Let's see how quickly we get through that menu before we talk about whether we need to review the entire Scottish game, the structure and the setup. Barry Ferguson, what's wrong with our game? Um, I, I think they should just be, be careful. I know there's been a, a reaction after the Belgium uh, defeat. Bear in mind we're playing against the best team with a hell of a lot of quality in that team. Um, I'll be producing enough young players, in my opinion, no we ain't. Um, but I don't think it's as bad as people are making out, Peter. I know there's been a lot made of these performance schools. If you look at it closely, there has been a few produced. Yeah, I think there should be more uh, getting produced. But I don't think we need to go back and have a full review again. I don't know how many times we need to do this. Mm. Um, it seems after every defeat we have, it's all we need to go back and look at the youth structure. Um, but I will be honest, I do think we need to start producing a lot more than we certainly are just now. Am I being too critical, Ruffy, in saying I agree? I don't think there's any need for panic. I think we've got to look at Steve Clark, give him, you know, three, four, five years to try and uh, and get it right. But I would say to you, we're producing players of a certain standard at a certain level at the moment, and I think that's still way below what everybody else is producing. Yeah, I, I do believe the only way that the the young players we've got just now will get better is playing against better opposition, being in European tournaments at the clubs they're with and let's hope there's a lot of them at the clubs who are competing at that level because as Barry will tell you when you come up against the, the Pirlos and that you, your game has to get up you have to you have to up your game you have to go away and play against these players and then come back to your own league and go God that's where I've got to be you know and that's when you up when you up your game when you play against better players I, I, I'm, I'm not in touch with the grassroots the coaching out there that young kids are getting coached but for me I think the clubs now are, are are controlling the way the young clubs are the young kids are going. They've all got their own academies. Every club's got an academy from twelve up to eighteen or whatever. They're coaching their way, you know. And I know I think we went down the road of the SFA. We're going to send a development officer out to every club and say, "Look, this is the way I want you to do it." That's never going to happen. Clubs are going to have their own coaches preaching what they want to do, and that's why. You know, maybe there's kids at 12 and 13, though, developing. But you look at it, we've got two of the best fullbacks we've had for a long while. We've got midfielders, McGinn, Christie, McGregor, who, given a year or two, will blossom into really, really good players. Yeah. The, the positions, as you keep telling, is striker and defender. Striker and centre-halves. Find us, find us them and we might be in a better place. Yeah, I personally think if we had defenders of a certain standard, I mean, I'm, I don't think for a minute that you're, you know, you're looking at the absolute top draw defenders. I don't see any coming through. And no disrespect to Scott McKenna's or Mikey Devlin's at Aberdeen. Uh, I look at the defenders that we have and I just don't think we've got the ability to stop teams. It's almost as if we have to score two goals to try and win in a game. So I think we've got a real problem there. But over and above that, Ruffy's mentioned certain players that he's rhyming off that will blossom. I think we've got our two best teams in Scotland are nothing better than mediocre Europa League teams. Mm. Yeah, look, look I, I agree with you. I mean, you look, for instance, like Aberdeen, Kilmarnock at the start of the season, been in uh, Europa League, getting put out. I mean, there's a bit of pressure put on some players. It's different, they handle it different. Um, and it's the same with the Celtic Rangers players as you say is that none of them are in the Champions League <coughs> they're in the Europa League and they're in there for a reason <coughs> as I say I, I believe we've got good players Peter I do but we've not got top players yeah. um, and that's where I think everybody's 
looking at maybe can we produce one or two. But I'm with you. I think Stevie Clark should um, be given two, three, four years um, to let him really build, build the team, give the guys maybe an under-21s who are producing and your Billy Gilmers and guys like that, let them come in and let them bide their time and eventually we can get them at a stage where, right, you know what, we're ready to go and mount a real challenge to get, in a ma uh, to get into sorry, a, a major championship. But the thing lies at a, a younger age for me, Peter. You've got to let these young players at 13, 14 go and express themselves. Go and let them enjoy it. Uh, when I go and watch football, I feel if quite a lot of these young kids are scared to go and make a mistake. We are at that age. It's all about enjoyment. I mean, for instance, I went, I went across to Spain in my pro license. I went to Villarreal in Valencia, and I was taken aback with the, the young kids, from five year old through to sixteen. It was all about playing small sided games. Yeah. Let them go and try. Let them go and express herself. Let them go and try things that maybe they're watching their their heroes do on on TV. And then ten fifteen minutes. Later, a coach would come in and maybe put a point across, 30 seconds maximum, on you go, go and play the game of football. I think here, we're just into coaching and <coughs> over-coaching. Yeah. Players. It's, not as if, it's not as if this is a unique thing. No, it's not. It's, it's emerged over the last year. This is a 20-year low. Yeah. I mean, you were part of it. And I look back and I think to myself, OK, of the special players that we've had that Qualifying mm -hmm. for major tournaments. We failed as well, Peter. I know you failed, but, yeah. but and again, I would say that the age-old problems for for our teams, we didn't have enough top draw players yep. uh, surrounding. You know, I look at the midfield and I think to myself, the best midfielder Scotland have had over the last 20, 30 years, you and Paul McStay. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely top draw. I'm looking and I'm saying to myself, okay, let's try and come up with players. We mentioned James McFadden. James McFadden was a talisman, but he didn't cut it at Everton. Mm -hmm. He ended up coming back here to Scotland. James McFadden was a special one-off type of player, but mm -hmm. he, he wasn't absolutely top drawer. We don't have them. I don't know what's happened in 20 years, and, I, and I'm not going to make the excuse of everybody's watching uh, you know, their iPad and they're playing with their, their, their phones. Somewhere along the line, if you you can only actually deal with the hand you've been dealt and we should be looking at the people in a positive sense and saying, OK, we've, only, we've not got the thousands that we used to have in the Douglas days and the Sooners. Let's work on them and let's, as you say, make them uh, you know, feel free to express themselves, work on their skills, do what Johan Cruyff did at Barcelona. I don't care if you're five foot one or six foot four. It's all about technical ability. It's all about skill. Yeah, I'm with you. I think you've got to give them that age. Even in, when I go and watch... I mean, it's reserved, it's called, it's no, I think it's under 23 here. I'm not too sure if it's pro youth or, or whatever. But I go and watch them, and when you're going watching a player, a certain player, and then he goes out of position, the coach is screaming at him to get back in. They're, they're scared to go and, they're scared to go and try something. Um, I just feel that's been taken out of the game. Uh, but I do, I, as I say, I go and watch a lot of reserve football, and I do think there's a lot of ability out there. It's just about how can we coach them to go to that next level. We've got good players, yep. but I believe these players can get even better. Yeah, I mean, was there ever... A, I mean, when you, apart from, obviously, I, I look and we joke about it quite a lot, Ruffy, when we look back at the times when we did qualify for major tournaments. I mean, you were in a side where there was guys that... I, I keep going back to that I picture. Know. I wish we had the picture on the programme, but I will, I'll get it for tomorrow's programme. There's, a, progr there's a, a picture of you standing alongside 10 Scotland players in 1981-82. I think it might be 1982. And the 10 outfield players have either won a European Cup, mm. are going to go and win a Cup Winners' Cup final, or will win a UEFA Cup medal. I mean, the ten players were all playing at the top level. Yeah, well, they're all they were all playing with Man United. They were playing with Liverpool. You know, some of them at Chelsea. Ipswich. You know, and Ipswich. <laughs> and but just singling one out, Stevie Archibald, playing with Barcelona. How many of our team they now could get a game with Barcelona? And we had one player, a, a main player, and a striker in a Barcelona side. That's the level that that was going about then. You know, that, that's the level. And I don't know how, where, how their coaching went or who coached them to get where they are. Yeah. Sometimes it's natural ability and you just you just let them go with it. But certainly we were fortunate way back then. But even after that, no, Barry had players 
you know, you've got to bring Ali McCoy and, uh, in there and, and McAllister and but Ali McCoy was part of a team that qualified for the, yeah. the World Cup. Yeah, you're right, you know, but I mean, th there was an era just after that that there still were players playing at the top level in English football. Yeah. I think nowadays now, and no disrespect to Stephen O'Donnell, he's playing with Kilmarnock in our league, you know, and, and other players like that. You I mean, okay, you've got the Celtic boys who are <laughs> playing in Europe and yeah. getting a wee bit of experience. But they're not playing at the top level. They're not playing against top level players. Yeah, o of the twenty years, Barry, was there a <clears throat> was there a time where you played either at international level or at club football um, for Rangers, where you were actually on the park and you're thinking, "This guy is giving me an absolute roasting. He's at a level that I've I've got to try and get to." Yeah, the, l listen, I think it was uh, the qualifying. The playoff game against England. Yeah. When you look at England's midfield, Scholes and Beckham's and Paul Ince's guys like that. They, that was their golden generation. Yeah, that was their golden generation. And that was kind of, there was a few left over for the, the World Cup the year before. Um, Craig Brown's team. Yeah. It was still Craig Brown's team that we, we obviously we, we were playing in. But that that's who you looked across and thought, right, you know what, I need to try and get to that level. And it was the same with Rangers, late 90s, early 2000s. You were playing against the Barcelonas and the Palmers at that time on a big team, a uh, big team at Bayern Munich, Bayern Leverkusen, and it was always good to come up against the guys and pit your wits against them and think, right, you know what? I've watched these guys on TV. This is a level they're playing at top end. Yeah. Right, can I go and match them? And that was always a burning <coughs> ambition inside me to say, right, you know what? A boy from Scotland can go and uh, do his cell justice against these guys. Yeah. See, when we go back and we keep analysing, though, what and Barry's saying, what the kids are getting taught and everything. What did you get taught, you know, at Rangers when you were 15 and 16? Mine's was real basic training. See, uh, it was sorry. very, very simple. I was never, it was all basic passing drills, basic shooting drills. In terms of your shape, we really never done any shape until I moved into the first team. Yeah. Yep. Very simple. And I found that, and the biggest surprise for me was when Dick Advocate, uh, Dick, Dick, sorry, Advocate came across. You're expecting a guy to go out and spend hours and hours on a training ground. His training was the most simplest training I've, I've ever had. Is that right? Yeah, very basic, very good. Yeah. But it was, it was clear what you had to do. Now I'm thinking some of these coaches nowadays are trying to make things too complicated. Where, for me... Football is a simple game, Peter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, you could probably didn't. Uh, you, you could go through five, ten, twenty programs, and you still wouldn't solve our problem. We're still not getting there. We might get there via uh, this playoff, where we could come up against a Bulgaria, have to get past a Norway or a Serbia. Uh, only time will tell on this. We're not certainly not going to solve the problems on this program, but we'll certainly ask questions of people at the SFA uh, and how they plan to move forward, because it looks as if they are thinking about holding another review into the structure at grassroots level. We shall find out um, what they're thinking on that over the next few days and weeks. How about a quiz just to take your mind off it? Now, Ruffy, I, I don't want you to give us the year, but <coughs> dare I say it, at that point in in, in that particular year, uh, who would have been your favourite? I mean, we had Scottish players in uh, in the Manchester United side. Uh, we had Scottish players playing in the Arsenal side. I think Willie Young, do you remember him? Mm -hmm. Big centre-half. Yeah, yeah. um, Gordon McQueen, mm -hmm. uh, as you Martin can see Buchan. from the pictures. Martin Buchan. Lots of really good players all playing at the top level. Of the two teams there, I don't know if you can remember them, but I, I would be, if it was me watching that game and I was watching Man United Arsenal at that particular year, I was always watching one player. I'll tell you who the player tell is. Tell me who the player is. Liam Brady. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, he was that, a good player. It was fantastic. He it, it eventually went on to play for Juventus and Sampdoria. He was absolutely phenomenal. That's the type of player that you, you want to see. That You know, when people actually talk about the great Rangers sides... 
they, they remember special players that do things that I just mean, actually stick in your mind. It's, that's why you want to go to football, to get somebody to create a memory for, me, for you that you'll never forget. You know how I love watching when he come up to Rangers? Obviously, being a Rangers fan, and as you say, he played AC Milan, fantastic player, Chelsea, Manchester United, Ray Wilkins. Yeah. I know he was older when he came up, but what a fantastic player he was. Yeah, technically superb. Yep, could handle the ball, tight situations, could play the game of football. He yeah. made it look simple. And, and as if to take this to a domestic level, I'm looking here at our coefficient, Ruffy. I mean, even with Aberdeen getting knocked out, as Barry points out, the teams out with Celtic and Rangers are just not good enough. 10 years, 15 years of nothing, mm -hmm. not even a group stage for them. It's a disaster. And that lower tier of people are, that are in our league, and our league is, you know, not top drawer, let's be honest about it. Um, Aberdeen managed to jump up a few places, 40 places, that increases the coefficient. But by Rangers and Celtic getting there again, that moves us up to 19th in the coefficient. It might, you know, it might not amount to any great amount, but it could be the difference between playing tougher teams when we get to these group stages, when we get to these qualifiers to make it to the major finals. Yeah, and Rangers and Celtic have been the flag bearers uh, for a long, long time now. And, and, and we do want other teams, we do want the likes of Hibs, Harps, Kilmarnock and everybody getting into the tournament because the, the more they get in, you would like to think the more experience they'd get and then the, the coefficient, coefficient would go up again. So, but they aren't doing particularly well. So the more points we get, the better. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, I, I have harped on about this till I'm blue in the face, which will amaze you, Barry. Um, but quite simply, we need a bigger league. We need yeah. we need a bigger league. We need more Scottish players playing. You know, the great thing about it, when Ruffy mentioned all the players that were playing for Scotland, you could actually mention second tier and third tier players who were still top drawer. We had, we had well, so Peter, many you, others. You mentioned that a couple of weeks ago. Now, if you make the league bigger, it might let us allow these young players to go and come into the first team because the managers are under pressure. They're scared to get relegated. So yeah. there is a fear factor. Now, I, I would guess if they think a young player is good enough to come in and play, they would play him. But also, I, I think it puts managers under pressure. With a league, I've called for it for a few years now. You brought it up a couple of weeks ago. We've got to make it in the 16, 18 teams yep. for me. I agree with you. I can't argue with you on that one. 100% behind you. Um, I've got it in the neck on social media for suggesting that uh, you'd be hard-pressed to want to buy a season ticket at Hearts. Um, but I'm afraid... I'm not the only one. Lots of Hearts fans are looking and cringing at what they're looking at at the moment. Uh, and it looks as if Stevie Naismith could be, you know, a real injury worry. He's picked up another one. This is a guy at 33 who signed a four-year deal. Oh. <laughs> but he's, he's another injury worry, and I don't know where Craig Levine's side are going. Yeah, well, he was in here a couple of weeks ago, and I was speaking to him off camera, and I was like, I mean, I'm surprised that they're, they're struggling. Because if you look at the squad, Peter, they've got good players. Yeah. I honestly do think they've got a good squad. It's just not working. And for me, I don't like saying this, I don't think one guy ever makes a team. But Hearts without Stevie Naismith are going to struggle. Can I ask you this? I mean, I agree with you because I'm a big fan of Stevie Naismith and it was great listening to him and getting an insight from him. Just on that point, uh, do you think uh, the manager has a lot to do with the way the, the, where they find themselves? Well, the manager's in charge of the way you, you play, the way you set up, the way you set up to play on a Saturday. Um, I, would get, I would hazard a guess that they'll work on that on the Thursday and the Friday, what way they're going to set up and what way they're going to play football. Yeah. OK, um, we're going to get Ruffy <coughs> and Barry's thoughts on uh, the type of player uh, that they like to watch because we've already mentioned Liam Brady. Uh, are you in the Messi or the Ronaldo camp? Well, last night he was breaking records again. Ronaldo, is he the greatest player in the world? I'm swaying towards him, Ruffy. I cannot believe it, by the way. I'm actually swaying towards him. I know you don't like him because you think the image, the diving, but, you know, I just think I just think he's phenomenal. No, I, I just think he's been overrated. <laughs> <laughs> he's it's fantastic. Class. I mean, the two of them, the two of them are great. At this moment in time, it's Ronaldo. 
Yeah. Because he's doing everything, he's breaking all the records. Messi's going to throw a wee sort of a lull just he's now. bad patch. Yeah, he's not, <laughs> we're not hearing about him. I don't know what he's up to. Yeah. Maybe it's because Barcelona are struggling a wee bit, not the Barcelona of old. Yeah. So, no, but I think he'll come to the four again. But it was just a privilege to watch them. They're, they're absolutely, as Barry said, absolute perfection. And if he was playing up front for us, I think we'd be a better side. <laughs> I think we might actually think, by the way, if Ronaldo was playing up front for Scotland, we would not be thinking about reviewing the grassroots structure. Um, he believe could play centre-half for us, couldn't he? Uh, listen, he could play anywhere. Are you in the Ronaldo camp or are you Messi still? It's a difficult one, but again, I mean, you're just looking at his records there. 54 hat-tricks, amount of goals he's scored. Peter, he's, for any young kid, look up to the two of them, but him as a specimen, as a man, the way he looks after himself, the way he's built, the guy's, the, the guy's unbelievable. What can you say about him? So, who am I going to go for? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pitting for, I'm surprised that myself was saying this, but Ronaldo just now. Yeah. What about you, Ruffy? At the now, it has to be Ronaldo. All oh, right, so you've, you've changed as well. Eh? There's a man who's not for turning, but he's uh, the quick 180. Um, well, you can give us your view on that. We uh, read all your comments across YouTube. Thank you to everyone who's been following us and uh, the ever-increasing football family on YouTube and Facebook as well. And look out for our special one-to-one -one interviews too. You can download the app and you can follow us on all the social media outlets now as well. And you'll get all the news from across the globe and unique video content from Ruffy, from Barry and from myself, Peter Martin. Thank you very much for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.